Welcome to Connection Ministries video Bible series, To Whom Shall We Go? This episode is the Holy Spirit, Acts of the Spirit. My name is Don Bowden, and welcome to Connection Ministries video Bible series, To Whom Shall We Go? In this Bible study, we will learn about the Holy Spirit and how He influences our lives. The study will be presented in three episodes. Episode 1 will show the Holy Spirit at work on the day of Pentecost. Episode 2 will reveal the Holy Spirit as our source of courage through the story of Paul and Ananias. In the third episode, the Holy Spirit gave Paul and Silas the power to witness to their jailer and his family. As we go through each lesson, there will be some discussion questions. At any time, feel free to pause the video to talk about the questions. If you'd like to download and print the discussion questions, you will find the note sheet next to the video on our website. Jackie will now start our first lesson with the story from the day of Pentecost when the Holy Spirit came to live in Jesus' disciples. Before we start, let's sing a worship song. There's nothing worth more that will ever come close. Nothing can compare. You're our living hope. Your presence. I've tasted and seen of the sweetest of loves where my heart becomes free and my shame is undone your presence lord holy spirit and fill the atmosphere your glory God is what our hearts long for to be overcome by your presence Lord your presence Nothing worth more that will ever come close. Nothing can compare. You're our living hope. Your presence. I've tasted and seen. Sweetest of loves, when my heart becomes free and my shame is undone. Your presence, Lord. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Come flood this place and Your glory, God, is what I want to 
grace and fill the atmosphere. Your glory, God, is what our hearts long for, to be overcome by your presence, Lord. Let's pray together. God, thank you for sending your son, Jesus. Apart from him, we are all lost. We are also thankful that you now live in us through your Holy Spirit. May he help us to understand all you want to teach us in this lesson and lead us to put our trust in Christ alone. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. When you go to the theater to see a movie, do you like to get there early enough to watch the previews of new movies coming soon? I know I do. These previews are great teasers to get us to come back to the theater. Previews are short and certainly don't tell us the whole story. They only give enough information to make us curious about the storyline so we will come back. Now Jesus gave his disciples a preview of a promise his father made. Like a movie preview, he did not give too many details, but just enough to let his followers know that his death would not be the end. The Father had a plan for their future and also for us. In Luke chapter 4, verse 49, Jesus told his disciples, I am going to send you what my Father has promised, but for now, stay in the city. Stay there until you have received power from heaven. This happened shortly after Jesus rose from the grave. Before his death, Jesus told his disciples at least three times that he would suffer death and then be raised from the dead. But the disciples didn't understand him. They were still confused that his body was missing from the tomb on Easter morning. We know why Jesus' body wasn't in the tomb. He rose from the dead. How do we know this? We know it because the Holy Spirit gives us the ability to believe it. But the disciples did not yet have the Holy Spirit living in them. What were the disciples missing that prevented them from understanding who Jesus was and why his body wasn't in the tomb? The disciples did not yet have the Holy Spirit living in them. Just before Jesus was taken up into heaven, he told his disciples in Acts chapter 1, verse 8, But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. Then you will tell people about me in Jerusalem and in all of Judea and Samaria. And you will even tell other people about me from one end of the earth to the other. In order for you and I to learn about Jesus, the disciples needed to start telling people. Jesus said they would tell people about him in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria. They would even tell people from one end of the earth to the other. To do this, they would need the Holy Spirit. Why was it important that the disciples told people about Jesus from one end of the earth to the other? In order for you and I to learn about Jesus, the disciples needed to start telling people. Jesus said they would tell people about him in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria. They would even tell people from one end of the earth to the other. On our own, we are not able to understand the truth about Jesus and believe that he is the Son of God. We will never have faith that Jesus died for our sins and that we can trust in him for eternal life in heaven. For this, we need the Holy Spirit. Without the Holy Spirit, we also won't have the spiritual gifts or the desire to lead others to believe that Jesus is the Son of God and that he died for our sins and that we can trust him for our eternal life. Other people will never have the gift of faith apart from the Holy Spirit. So why do we need the Holy Spirit? We need the Holy Spirit to understand the truth about Jesus and believe that he is the Son of God. We need him to have faith that Jesus died for our sins and that we can trust him for eternal life in heaven. The Holy Spirit also gives us spiritual gifts to lead others to believe that Jesus is the Son of God, that he died for our sins, and that we can trust him for eternal life. There will be many challenges and obstacles we will have to face in our lives. 
It is the Holy Spirit who will give us the ability to overcome these challenges and do extraordinary things. We find the story when the promised Holy Spirit came to live in the disciples on the day of Pentecost in Acts chapter 2. Do you know what Pentecost is? Pentecost was one of the Jewish feast days that came 50 days after Passover. It celebrated the first crops that came out of the fields during the harvest. Jews would come from many countries to celebrate in Jerusalem. They would speak many different languages. What was the day of Pentecost for the Jewish people? Pentecost was one of the Jewish feast days that came 50 days after Passover, celebrated the first crops that came out of the fields during the harvest. Jews would come from many countries to celebrate in Jerusalem. Jesus' disciples were all together in one place. Some scholars believe they were gathered out of fear, while others believe they were together out of obedience and in prayer. They shared the same love for God and trusted in His promise of the Holy Spirit. As they gathered, a sound like a strong wind filled the whole house. Something that looked like flames of fire came to rest on each of them, filling them with the Holy Spirit. They began to speak in other languages. Jews from many other countries were staying in Jerusalem because of the Feast of Pentecost. They spoke many different languages. What outward signs did the disciples experience when they were filled with the Holy Spirit? A sound like a strong wind filled the whole house. Something that looked like flames of fire came to rest on each of them, and they began to speak in other languages. When the Jewish people heard the sound from the disciples, a crowd came together in bewilderment. Each one was hearing his own language being spoken. They were amazed and asked about the disciples, aren't they all Galileans? And how can we hear them in our native language? They all came from different places with different languages, yet they heard the disciples declare the wonders of God in their own language. Amazed, they asked each other, what does this mean? Some of them made fun of the disciples and said, they've had too much wine. Then Peter stood up and spoke to the crowd. Peter spoke the words of the prophet Joel, who had spoken of the coming of the Holy Spirit. Then Peter spoke of Jesus Christ, his death and resurrection, and the promise God made to David of the coming Messiah. Peter said the people of Israel had nailed Jesus to the cross, but God had made him Lord and Messiah. How would you feel to know that you would nail Jesus to the cross? Would you feel sorry about it? When the people heard this, they were filled with shame. They asked them, what should we do? Peter replied, all of you must turn away from your sins and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Then your sins will be forgiven. You will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. The promise is for you, your children, and for all whom the Lord chooses. Those who accepted Peter's message were baptized. Around 3,000 people joined the believers that day. What did the people who accepted what Peter told them do? Those who accepted Peter's message were baptized. Around 3,000 people joined the believers that day. The Holy Spirit didn't come just for the day of Pentecost. He came to live in the hearts of believers. The book of Acts is filled with stories of how the Holy Spirit worked in the early church. He is still at work in our lives today. Acts chapter 2, verses 42 through 47, Luke tells us that the believers studied what the apostles taught and they ate and prayed together. They shared everything they had, and no one was in need. Daily they met together and ate meals with glad and sincere hearts. It says that every day the Lord was adding to their group more people who were being saved. This was the power of the Holy Spirit at work in their lives. The early believers had the Holy Spirit to help them. They had a community of believers where the Holy Spirit unified them together in God's love. The good news is that the believers did not keep the Holy Spirit a secret. They now had the power and ability to be bold and tell others. Quickly, the Lord brought more and more people into their community. Jesus was no longer physically present with them, but the Holy Spirit, God's own spirit, now dwelled in them. 
the same Holy Spirit who gave courage and wisdom to the disciples continues today to be available to anyone who believes. The Holy Spirit gives us wisdom and understanding. He leads us in God's ways and strengthens us when we are weak. He helps us pray and follow in His will. These next questions are a bit more personal. If you are comfortable with the friends you're with, you can answer, but you don't have to. This is a time for you to think about how this Bible lesson relates to your own life. What can you do to allow the Holy Spirit to work in your life? God wants to speak with you. Talk to Him in prayer. It is important to tell God you are sorry for the things you do wrong and let Him know you will stop doing them. Bring Him your joys and struggles. Spend time reading the Bible, which is His Word. You can watch video Bible lessons. And you can be part of a friendship group. Be part of a group of believers. Share with your friends how the Holy Spirit is working in your life. Pray along and make this prayer your own. God, through your Holy Spirit, keep me from sin and help me to follow Jesus. Give me wisdom and understanding and help me to tell others about Jesus. In your name I pray, amen. Now join me for a closing worship song. Thank you for joining us for this first episode about the Holy Spirit at work on the day of Pentecost. Join us for the second episode where we reveal the Holy Spirit as our source of courage through the story of Paul and Ananias. If you have any questions or need information, you can email us at connect at connection-ministries.org or call our office at 317-646-5067.
If you would like to partner with Connection Ministries by providing financial support, you can give online at connectionministries.org.